a flying heat shield. According to reports from NASA, an unscrewed Orion spacecraft will be launched during the Exploration Mission 1, beginning a three-week trip to space. NASA's Orion spacecraft is 16.5 feet in diameter, one of the largest of its kind. The base structure of the heat shield has titanium truss covered with layers of carbon fiber material known as composite substrate. Large blocks of avcoat and ablative material were then bonded onto the shield surface. Avcoat has been used in the past in Apollo's heat shields and the Orion Exploration Flight Test 1. However, this time blocks were used instead of the usual injecting method. The Orion spacecraft would be taken 40,000 miles beyond the moon and back to Earth. As the spacecraft re-enters Earth's atmosphere, it would need to withstand temperatures of up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is when the ablative material will wear away and prevent heat from being transferred to the rest of the spacecraft. The NASA engineers plan to monitor how the Orion performs in outer space, and if it works well, it may soon carry astronauts into space destinations such as the Moon and Mars. Check out more space stories. What's hiding on the dark side of Venus? For the first time ever, scientists are studying Venus's mysterious night side and have found that it's vastly different from its day side. It takes Venus 225 days to revolve around the sun and 243 days to fully rotate on its axis. As a result, night and day on the planet last longer than on Earth. So far, the day side has been studied extensively, but the night side has been notoriously difficult to observe until now. Venus's atmosphere consists of strong winds blowing 60 times faster than the planet's rotation. This super rotation has been assumed to be uniform in both sides, but new data shows the winds are more chaotic and irregular on the night side. Night side clouds formed large, wavy, filament-like patterns, not seen in day clouds, and are dominated by stationary waves, which remain still and do not move with the atmosphere. Stationary waves are thought to form specifically over steep mountainous areas, but were recently detected in the planet's southern hemisphere, an area with low elevation. The waves were likewise assumed to be rising up through the cloud from the surface, but were mysteriously missing from the lower and intermediate cloud levels. Scientists have yet to explore what this means, but will likely need to come up with new, updated models of Venus to help them figure it out. Now, where did that come from? Something, somewhere in deep space just sent out the fastest radio burst on record. Trouble is, we don't know what its origin is. The strongest ever fast radio burst ever recorded by astronomers hit Earth earlier this month. Scientists say signal FRB 180309 was heard on March 9th. Its signal-to-noise ratio was four times larger than the previous strongest signal. Astronomers don't know what it is, but some speculate it could be anything from stars colliding to interstellar travel. What do you think it was? Uncrewed space plane nails drop test. Scientists dropped this space plane from a helicopter over the Mojave Desert on Saturday. The privately built autonomous Dream Chaser space plane completed a free flight drop test in California on Saturday, November 11th. It can carry seven passengers and looks like a smaller version of current NASA shuttles. Dream Chaser will use Atlas rockets to fly half a dozen delivery missions to the International Space Station by 2024. The test examined the plane during the final approach and landing phase of flight. The Dream Chaser was uncrewed, meaning it was flying on auto, but despite that, it pretty much crossed the drop test. 8,000 feet. Copy 8,000. Care on. Good reader, all tenders. Approach and land. PTIs. Copy approach and land. PTIs are active. End of PTIs. Copy. PTIs complete. 400 feet. Copy 400. Landing gear. Copy gear deploy. Good gear deploy. Five feet. Touchdown. China goes to the dark side. China has deployed a relay satellite that's meant to bridge communication between Earth and a planned exploration on the far side of the moon. 
Xinhua News Agency reports Chiao or Magpie Bridge is named after a Chinese folklore in which magpies form a bridge to enable two star-crossed lovers to meet for one day. The Chiao satellite features a dish antenna and two solar arrays and was launched atop a Long March 4C rocket from southwest China on Sunday morning. Chiao is expected to enter a halo orbit around the second Lagrangian point and would be the world's first communication satellite operating in that orbit. Its main purpose is to establish a communication link between Chinese mission control and the yet-to-be-launched Chang'e 4 mission that will explore the moon's dark side. The Chang'e lunar rover and lander is currently scheduled for December 2018 launch. Chiao is also equipped with the Netherlands-China Low Frequency Explorer, a radio scanner that will search for ancient radio signals dating back to the early universe. The reason the satellite is able to do this is because it would be in the shadow of the moon, completely unaffected by Earth's interference. Uh-oh. The People's Republic of China has big plans for space. China is working on a newly planned station dated for a 2019 launch. Beijing expects it to be operational by 2022. The space station will be able to host up to three astronauts over 180-day periods. This is around the same time span that astronauts will spend on the International Space Station. China says their planned space station will orbit Earth at altitudes of between 340 kilometers and 450 kilometers. The ISS orbits at around 400 kilometers. China's space station may outlast the ISS, as that craft's future is unclear after 2025. Reportedly, the U.S. government is considering pulling its funding or privatizing it. According to Yahoo News, the U.S. has banned China from using the ISS since 2011. Long Day New research shows that days on Earth are getting longer as the moon slowly spirals away from us. Due to gravitational forces between Earth and its satellite, the Moon moves away at a rate of 3.82 centimeters per year, causing our planet's rotation to slow. According to NASA, Earth currently completes a full rotation on its axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. But researchers using astrochronology on geological rock layers found that when the Moon was closer to Earth 1.4 billion years ago, a day was just over 18 hours. The length of a day has grown 175 thousandth of a second on average per year and is expected to continue at this rate for the next millions or billions of years. The Moon will eventually stop moving when it reaches a stable distance from Earth. When this happens, the two will be tidally locked, rotating at the same pace, with the Moon visible from only one side of Earth. Of course, that's assuming either of them survive the Sun's destructive red giant phase. <laughs> 